Hey guys, it's Chris. The 300 Rally has two Achilles heels. One is soft suspension, the other is that it's down on power. Today we're going to dig in on the power equation by taking the first step in freeing up that engine to breathe a little easier. So the Honda 300 Rally has two main weaknesses. That is soft suspension and it's down on horsepower. So today we're going to tackle the first element of that. We're going to address the horsepower equation and there's really three ways we're going to attack it. Today I'm going to walk you through allowing the airbox to breathe easier. And so for that, we're going to swap out the air filter for a DNA air filter. We're also going to add more volume to the amount of air that's coming in the air box. And we're going to do that with air vents by UniFilter. In future videos, we're going to tackle the other side of the equation, which is the exhaust and allow the engine to breathe easier on the exhaust side by replacing the exhaust system with a Yosh pipe. The third piece of the equation is to add a piggyback EFI controller, which we're going to do in a future video, which is a simple process that you can do in your own shop. All in all, as with a lot of small adventure bikes, any increase in horsepower is going to be noticeable. And because I'm not a huge fan of spending hours working on the bike, I'd rather be out riding. I'm not going to do the heavy engine mount of modifications that are available to you. And, but I will include some links in the information below to direct you with a couple of great videos. If you're mechanically inclined and you don't mind getting your hands super dirty and getting that engine all apart, there are some modifications that allow you to extract a couple extra horsepower beyond what we're going to do here in the next couple videos. So with that said, let's upgrade this air box and get some air flowing. All right. So there's two elements that we're going to do in order to help the air box breathe better. One is to swap out the stock filter for DNA's high performance air filter. This will flow about 156% of the amount of air that the stock unit will flow. The other piece is to modify the air box. We're going to use uni filters, air vents, and we're going to drill a couple of holes. These are one inch uh, air vents. We can run them with or without the foam, and we're going to be able to place those on the air box to let it flow that much more air. So in order to get in there and do those two simple operations, we're going to take the side cover off. For those of you who have not already taken out, there's a push rivet in the top corner right here that connects these two pieces of bodywork. I take those rivets out because this bodywork is very solid just the way it is. It, it actually pushes into to a couple grommets and is held on by that bolt. So it really doesn't need that little push rivet. By taking that out, I no longer need to take the seat off. Those of you who have left that rivet in, you're gonna need to remove the bolts at the back of the seat, take the seat up and remove that little rivet. Pretty straightforward operation. Once you take it out of there, I suggest you not put it back. Then the next piece is a five millimeter Allen key. To loosen off the front piece of bodywork as well just to give me a little bit of room to work with at the front here so once once that little pop plastic pop rivet is not holding on any longer the only thing that's holding on is a couple of tabs that kind of interconnect here and it's just you just wiggle them a little bit and they come apart as you can see right there it's just a little finicky but they're just one goes under and one goes over and so that's what's holding on at the front so it's really just two push grommets and then the one screw at the front but that's the hole in the top there that you can see which is where that little pop rivet lives all right and so what you'll notice is that there's a snorkel which is how the air box breathes so the air box is sealed except for the snorkel which has a, an inside diameter about an uh, inch and a half. And so looking at that, if I wanna increase the airflow, because I know the DNA filter is gonna flow more than 50% better than the stock filter, I want at least 50% more air to be able to get into the air box. I'm gonna need to have a bigger snorkel, or I'm gonna have to create openings that allow this air box to breathe. The very bottom of that snorkel is slightly below the top of the air box. Um, so at its lowest point, that means if you're doing a river crossing, that's kind of the maximum depth of water that you can go safely through before you might take in some water. Now we have a couple options in terms of the extra holes that we, we create. We can place them on that airbox door or we can place them back here. There's a flat surface here that makes a good spot for us to create a one inch hole for this filter vent. And because these are one inch and that inside diameter of that uh, snorkel is an inch and a half, 
by putting adding two of these, we could get more than 50% better airflow into the air blocks. So if we place a snorkel right on top, right up here, I'd like to place a second one on the outside of the door, um, as high as I can make it to get to the top edge here. And that will only compromise my water level less than an inch as far as river crossings. And honestly, don't do a ton of river crossings that are up to the bottom of my seat. However, if that's a factor for you, then I would say stick with just the one vent on the top with no foam and uh, you're probably good to go. So that's food for your thought and your own consideration depending on how you ride the bike. And unlike race bikes, we've got a air filter door here that's gonna take us five Phillips screws to get it off. Not, not a huge deal. All right, so if I want that filter vent at the top of the door, it's gonna end up right in here. So I'm just gonna look at where can I safely end up with this door. It's gotta fit through all of these reinforcing ridges. Easiest way for me to locate this is to take a very small drill bit and drill straight through the center of one of these because I've got, I have six of these air filter vents and I'll only be using two. So I can cannibalize one just to create a center hole that'll come straight through and that'll guide me and then I'll drill it from the other side. I want it as high up as I can go. So I'll lean this up against the top edge. I'm gonna go ahead and drill that out right now. All right, so that hole saw is pretty aggressive, it leaves a lot of rough edges. So I'm gonna need to clean that up with a file, a round file and clean up those edges. So the other piece that we're gonna have to do is because there's not room for it to stick out this far, so we're gonna have to take a hacksaw and trim this down to half as thick as what it is. So I'm gonna take that over the bench and cut that down because it'll end up somewhere in here and there's not a lot of clearance. So I wanna make sure it will fit once the, the door is back on and you can see it's, it's about half the depth that we need about half should work out just perfect. Then the next one's gonna go out here on the back. So I'm gonna drill that out and then clean up the edges. All right, and to get a clean shot at the hole that I need to do on the back here, I just need to get the seat off out of my way. And then of course, vacuuming up any shavings, bits of plastic, so they don't become an issue with the new air filter. Okay, so that top hole is now cleaned up. One of the screws that holds the air box together is right here. So there's a bit of a bump out behind here. So either I would say in the future, and I'm figuring it out the hard way, move, moving the hole a little bit further back will clear this, this screw. Otherwise, if you're too close to this screw, that little piece of plastic that's in behind here is gonna mean you're gonna have to trim down your airbox vent, just like we did with the one on the side. It's soft and it's easy to cut with a hacksaw. And then you just take off the loose bits and then this should fit right in.
it's a little mm -hmm. harder to push them in once you cut it because the sides are basically tapered so that they go in a little easier. So a little work with the file to just get it started. You don't want to take off all of the edge around here because you want it to be loose, obviously, but just the, just the very leading edge just needs a little bit of a trim in order for it to pop in there easily. All right, so that's on there, that looks good. So the next piece is to vacuum out and clean up so that there's no debris left over, and then we'll swap out the air filter real quick. So the last piece is to replace the stock air filter with the DNA air filter. You'll, you can see the specs on the box. Flows a ton more air. It's also the type of filter that needs to be oiled and cleaned regularly in order to continue to use it. They do come pre-oiled from the factory and you can buy the oil and the cleaner so that you can clean these from time to time in order to maintain the dirt catching ability. It needs to have that oil in there because the material itself allows a lot more air to go through. Um, so that oil does a good job of just grabbing those dirt particles so they don't make it into your engine. Remove the stock air filter is just two clips here, which you probably already figured out. Just drop it down and wiggle it forward. So that's your paper air filter that you get from the factory. DNA air filter has a rubber gasket here. You just put a dab of grease on it. That's what I'm gonna do here right now. So let's just get the grease on there and pop that in. So this is a little container that they give you. It goes a long way, so don't use very much of it because grease tends to get everywhere, as you know. So the filter itself comes has basically two parts. One is the steel cage, which applies pressure and pushes it down, and the other piece is just the, uh, the filter portion. And again, we'll just put it in the same way the, uh, the original unit went in. That takes quite a bit of pressure for it to snap into place. Yeah, so feeling around the edges, it, it all feels like it's seated properly. That's all there is to it. Now we'll get the airbox cover back on. All right guys, so that's it for the Airbox mod and air filter upgrade. Next up, we swap out the exhaust in our next video, and then we'll follow that finally with the last horsepower strategy, which is that EFI piggyback controller, which will help us make the most of the changes that we've made. Hopefully all of this is helpful for you to make the most of your Rally 300. I certainly hope it is. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.